Welcome everyone, and thank you for joining today's webinar, Leap or Linger, Determining Which Ad Platforms to Test for Your B2B Brand, presented by Mountain and Martech. Before we begin, if you have any audio issues, click the audio icon on your screen to enable your audio. If you have any viewing issues, you can use the Q&A section at any time to communicate with us. You can also send questions and comments directly to the speaker about his presentation at any time. Now let's get to the presentation. Joining us today is Eric hatson Bueller, Senior Digital Marketing Manager at Mountain. Thanks for joining us, Eric. I'll turn things over to you. Sounds great. Thank you so much. Um, yeah, hi, everyone. My name is Eric hatson Bueller. Uh, I oversee all of our digital uh, strategy and execution on the paid media side here at Mountain. Um, prior to joining Mountain, I worked for a number of years on the ad agency side of the business. Um, so very familiar with paid media through and through. Um, yeah, very excited to, to talk to you today. Um, today's really key takeaway is, you know, as, as the advertising landscape evolves and shifts and expands, um, you know, how do we think about adding new channels? How do we determine what channels are a good fit, especially in the B2B world where, you know, a lot of the new channels that tend to uh, become available to us are maybe more social like TikTok and, you know, how do we fit B2B into something like that? Um, so we're going to walk through, a, you know, a series of questions. What we really hope to do is develop a consistent rubric to determine what channels and new tactics and tests are worth, uh, you know, trying out for you, potentially adding as a permanent addition to your marketing mix, um, and then sort of evaluating, you know, what does that look like in terms of your time commitment, your budget commitment. Uh, so yeah, that's really what we're looking to to answer today in terms of our key takeaway. Uh, so today's agenda, we'll walk through some of those key questions um, that you want to explore before launching a test. Uh, we'll talk about how to determine if your tests are successful, you know, what KPIs to use, um, what measurement tools you can use, and, and how to evaluate those. And then ultimately, if you do determine that maybe a channel isn't right for you, why you should keep your options open and, and continue that evaluation on an ongoing basis. Uh, and this is really the key dilemma. You know, I, I touched on it a little bit briefly, but there are so many options and we have so little time. Uh, you know, we're digital marketers. I'm a digital advertiser myself. Uh, as the landscape continues to evolve, uh, you know, what do we do with our time and, and money and available ad dollars? Um, our marketing mix looks a lot different than it did a year ago, let alone, you know, two or three or five years ago. Uh, so how are we constantly evaluating what channels work for us? Uh, where do we want to expand? You know, should we take a leap into a channel like TikTok or, you know, even connected TV? Or do we sort of stick with what's tried and true with LinkedIn and paid search? Um, you know, we're just constantly asking those questions and it can feel a little bit overwhelming at times to, you know, feel like you're almost reinventing the wheel every time a new channel comes down and you're asking yourself, well, should we do this? You know, what questions do we need to answer? Are we set up to, to integrate this into our marketing mix on an ongoing basis. Um, and we'll talk through a lot of those questions here today. Uh, but one thing that I think is key before we even get into, you know, some of that more structured rubric is, is just creating a structured approach. Um, you know, a consistent rubric really help you evaluate and answer these questions on an ongoing basis. It can feel very daunting. You know, I'm, I'm sure we're all familiar with uh, setting out our annual media plan or quarterly plan and then something pops up, you know, a, a new feature is released within an existing platform or a new channel, you know, finally becomes big enough that it's hard to ignore anymore. Uh, and then we sort of ask ourselves, well, what do we do? We have this set media plan. We got approval on these budgets. If we need to change this, you know, we might need to go through a bunch of red tape now, or maybe we need to secure additional budget. And that can involve, you know, time and energy and other teams like legal and finance and it can feel very overwhelming um, just to even consider launching on a new channel, let alone actually finding that channel to be a strong driver of performance um, for you and, and your business and your outcome. So really what I think is important is, is just establishing a structure around that. One thing I like to do, if at all possible, and, and this will obviously vary by business and, and organization, but is secure a little bit of a test budget. Um, at the beginning of, you know, whether it's annually or quarterly or monthly that you're planning and securing your budgets, um, you know, you know that tests are going to come up throughout the year. There are things that you're going to want to test into. 
new channels, or as I mentioned, even features or new placements available within existing platforms. Um, instead of, you know, kind of scrambling and pulling dollars from other channels that are performing well and trying to justify that, try to set aside, you know, a percentage of your media spend uh, at the beginning of the year as sort of a, an available test budget. And then when these opportunities do come up, you don't feel as flustered. It doesn't feel as um, you're, you're a little bit more prepared and you're able to just, you know, you have that budget available. You can take that. It's already green lit. Uh, you can set up the campaign, you can launch and, and you're good to go. Um, so that's one tip. But in general, just think about creating a structure that works for you and your organization and how you can think about testing into and expanding expanding into new channels. Uh, and the following are, are some questions that, that we use and I use to decide whether we should test into a new channel as a B2B advertiser ourselves. Um, you know, some of these might feel really straightforward, but it's important to ask yourselves these, uh, these questions every time that you're thinking about expansion or tests, because um, they'll really help you, you know, if one doesn't check a box, then maybe set it aside for now and, and visit it a little bit later. Uh, so the first question I ask is, do our prospects use this channel? Um, you know, do our customers use this channel? If your audience isn't there, if your target audience isn't there, um, then there's not really a point to test there. Uh, and this looks a lot different than it did, you know, it, like I said, three or four years ago, where, you know, we think of as a B2B advertiser, of course, LinkedIn, uh, you know, trade publications and those types of placements as very valuable. That's where we know, you know, manager plus or director level or executive level um, you know, employees are on, on a regular basis, but that's not to say that those people aren't on TikTok and aren't on Instagram and Snapchat and connected TV. Um, you know, they are, they're, they're everywhere nowadays and it can be valuable to get your message uh, in front of those users at any time and on any channel. So, you know, this question might be um, a little less relevant than it was five or 10 years ago because there was a more limited targeting uh, set and, and your channel options were a little bit more limited, but it's still very important for you to ask. And, and, you know, for us on Mountain, being a connected TV platform ourselves, for connected TV, that answer is, is almost always yes. Um, you know, we run our and, and pride ourselves on living room quality uh, television placements. We're, we're serving ads on TVs. And really what it comes down to is you're asking yourselves, do our prospects have TVs? Um, and most users and, and, and you know people who own TVs now use streaming in some way, shape or form. There are just too many services not to. Um, so that answer is, is typically yes when it comes to connected TV. Uh, and then within the platform, you know, assuming that first that answer to that first question is yes, what audience targeting capabilities do I have? Uh, do I have you know personas or ideal customer profiles um, that we've identified as an organization and built out? Can I reach those people? Can I prospect for new individuals within that platform at scale and with reach? Um, you know, that's really important because you wanna use uh, your digital advertising to not just capture the existing demand, but also generate new demand. So you wanna be able to reach new users. You wanna be able to reach prospects and continue to grow the business instead of just, you know, continually capture those people who are raising their hand and looking for your organization or service uh, directly. That being said, um, it's also important that you can retarget, you know, both site visitors and ABM lists. These are a set of users who have shown interest or that you've identified as being incredibly strong fits for your business. Uh, so you want to be able to reach both of these audience segments on a consistent basis. And again, at scale, um, you know, retargeting site visitors is typically something that's available across a lot of different social platforms using pixel placements. Um, Mountain and Connected TV, of course, we can retarget site visitors as well. Uh, but the ABM list is a really important one and one that's a little bit more difficult for us as B2B advertisers. Uh, you know, we think of LinkedIn, of course, as a channel where we're able to reach ABM lists on a consistent basis, or I should say match those lists at a high rate and target those users. Um, but that gets a little bit more difficult when you start to expand to some other channels, especially on the social side, because naturally there aren't, you know, a ton of people who use um, their business emails to set up a Twitter account or a Snapchat account. So, you know, then the solution might be to work with other data providers and third party partners um, to try and increase those match rates and pull audiences into those platforms. But now you're adding additional cost on top of what might already be a stretch for you to test into as a new channel. So uh, keep that in mind. And as it comes to connected TV, this might be a surprise, but ABM list is one of our 
uh, core you know features and, and ways that we reach our audience on our own platform. Um, we're able to target our ABM list across connected TV, which is is just a game changer because it it allows us to not only scale our reach against our ABM list, but do it in a really fun and creative way. And again, on the largest screen in the house being the television. So, um, you know, ask yourselves these questions and how important each of these components might be to your business, uh, and then decide if, if that channel might be a right fit for you. Uh, do we have existing assets to run on this platform? This becomes more and more important as uh, you know, I'm, I'm sure everyone has seen the recent announcements from Instagram with Reels. And, you know, we think about TikTok and YouTube and, and Facebook and all of these platforms are moving towards video first. Um, and of course, Connected TV already being a, a video first channel in itself or video only channel, um, we feel that ourselves. So think about do we have creative assets to use on these channels? Uh, but don't let assets be a deterrent. Um, you know, there are a lot of services out there, you know, of course, Quick Frame by Mountain is, is the best of these that can provide really high quality video content for you um, that don't require the investment of a full creative agency or a, a full production team in-house. Um, so don't let video sort of scare you, especially in the B2B space. It can feel overwhelming and think about, you know, oh, how do we come up with a creative idea to promote ourselves on video as a B2B organization? Um, there are partners like QuickFrame by Mountain that can really help with that strategy and help develop those creative assets for you, uh, not only on CTV, but across every social channel. Um, so think about that, but don't let it be a deterrent because video is, you know, I don't even want to say the, the way of the future. It's, it's sort of the present now. Um, every social channel is prioritizing video. So it's important to find a way to develop strong video creative um, and sort of you know, take advantage of those new placements across every channel. Uh, and like I said, QuickFrame is a great partner to do that. Is it brand safe? Uh, another really important question that becomes a little bit um, more difficult, it feels like every day to, to really determine the answer of, uh, or the, the answer to. Um, one thing I like to do is just take a scan of industry news. There are a lot of brand safe partners out there, uh, but there are a lot of, you know, trade publications that talk about brand safety Visibility, um, you know, YouTube over the years has struggled a bit in terms of being able to guarantee their brand safety within the settings you can set in the Google Ads platform. Um, so it's important to consider brand safety, absolutely, because no channel is worth sacrificing your brand safety for. Uh, that being said, also sort of be aware of those inherent risks of, you know, native to each platform. You know, TikTok, you know, is what it is and it can be very valuable. There's also a lot of content on there that you need to consider when you're thinking of launching your brand on a channel like that. Um, YouTube I used as an example as well. Think about, you know, do we want to show ads on live streams or do we not feel comfortable with that because we're not really sure what can happen? It's it's live. Anything can happen. So, um, you know, this is another area that connected TV and the mountain platform really excels. Again, we pride ourselves on living room quality television only placements. We're being shown on, on premium streaming services with premium content um, so you can really feel comfortable in, in your brand safety running on connected TV uh, even more so than you can across other social channels. And this is a really important one as well. How much how much time and knowledge and expertise do we need to maximize performance on this channel? Uh, it can be really easy. We've, we've all done it in our careers. Uh, it can be really easy to set up a campaign and set it and forget it and then sort of come back to it. But it's something that we always run, so we need to keep it on. Um, you know, new channels can sometimes be a little bit overwhelming in terms of, you know, TikTok, the optimization strategy might be a little bit different than what you're used to if you've been primarily running LinkedIn ads. Um, how do I think about optimizing to this audience? It's, you know, definitely a different audience. They engage in a different way. So what signals should I be looking at? Um, you know, it's just a little bit, of a, of a difficult question to understand and ask yourselves. But it's also very important because, you know, you come into this with a testing mindset, but the ultimate goal is to really make this part of your evergreen marketing mix moving forward if it performs well. So, you know, do we need to expand the team? Do we need to um, utilize, you know, third party tools or platforms to really make this a success? How much time do we need to dedicate to, you know, training or learning new skills um, how much budget is needed, you know, 
all of these questions I think are important and they're important to, to consider at the start of the test because what you don't wanna do is run a test, find that it's a success and then get yourself in a position where you know, you know that it would be great for the business to continue to run this channel um, or this tactic, but it's just not sustainable for you, whether that's you individually in your time, whether it's the assets that your organization can provide on a regular basis. Um, so just consider this as a, as a question when you think about how much do we need to dedicate in terms of our resources to really uh, make this sustainable and part of our marketing mix on a permanent basis. Um, and then, of course, as I as I talked a lot about test and then assess, um, you know, once we launch a test, how do we determine if it was successful? You know, it's important to establish those primary KPIs from a measurement standpoint before you begin the test. Um, and this is going to vary a lot depending on the platform and it should vary depending on the platform and the tactic and audience. Um, you know, it would be easy to go into a test on Snapchat, for example, and say, you know, if we're a B2B organization, Obviously, our ultimate goal might be to get users to sign up for a free trial or, you know, make a purchase, but maybe our sales cycle is six months long and it might not be very realistic to go into a test on Snapchat uh, with conversions as your primary KPI, because that's just not what Snapchat is going to drive for you with that type of, of business. So think about how do we align our KPIs on this platform to evaluate performance and determine if it was a success or if it wasn't. And then if we do determine that it maybe wasn't a success, why is that? Was it the audience? Um, was it just that the platform isn't the right fit for us? Was it a lack of assets or maybe it was poor quality assets? Was it a, a lack of optimizations that we made during the test? Um, you know, there are a whole second, kind of a second list of questions that you can ask yourself both during and following the test to determine how well it performed. But um, it's just important to go into it with, with clear goals in mind uh, and clear metrics to determine success. And, you know, whether those are just benchmarks you've received from um, maybe your account reps within the platform or from, you know, doing some research online, uh, even that can be enough just to help you sort of set a benchmark and, and evaluate your performance. Um, you know, I mentioned Snapchat being a, a great driver for brand awareness. Mountain, on the other hand, can do both performance and awareness. Um, and that's, you know, Mountain is one of our top performing channels as a B2B advertiser ourselves um, in terms of not only, you know, of course, impressions and reach what we think of more traditionally in the sense of metrics on television, uh, but conversions, traffic to site, uh, return on ad spend, CPAs, those are all metrics that we can not only track, but drive really strong performance around on Mountain. Um, so keep that in mind that you can use Mountain as, as both an awareness and a performance driving channel. Um, so it's, it's really a great, uh, you know, piece of our marketing mix and, and something we recommend for all B2B advertisers and brands. Uh, and then leaving the door open. This is, uh, this is a, uh, I feel like I keep saying this is an important one, but it is. Um, just because the, a platform or a tactic or a feature isn't the right fit for you right now doesn't mean it won't ever be. Uh, you know, keep an eye on the industry news, keep an eye on trends. Um, case studies are, are very vital and, you know, maybe helping an organization decide if a new channel or a new tactic is worth testing into, um, you know, things evolve so quickly The the example that we're showing here, you know, think of Netflix and, and Disney Plus. Disney Plus has been a streaming service that sort of launched um, with ad supported tiers and has really capitalized on that. Netflix historically hasn't been providing an ad supported tier. They have been relying on, you know, paid subscriptions and everything like that. And you know, everyone's aware of the issues with sharing logins. And now Netflix is at the point where they're opening up an ad supported tier. And that might open up a new opportunity for your business. That's a new ad placement and a new audience that hasn't been available in the past for us as advertisers. So consider that in your marketing mix moving forward and in what you might want to test in the coming quarter or coming months or next year. Um, there are opportunities that are constantly coming up and arising for us and the digital landscape is is ever changing. Um, you know, our, like I said at the beginning, our marketing mix looks unrecognizable to what it was three years ago. Um, so keep that door open, keep that mindset open. Um, and CTV advertising is another great example. There was a, a report that came out, I think it was late last week, that CTV users have now overtaken cable users in terms of um, sort of like percentage of of television watched and that's a game changer. You know, CTV is now, streaming is now the largest 
uh, television placement or, or level of inventory that exists on a television. So CTV, you know, four or five years ago may have felt a little bit far fetched. It might might have felt too new for your business or your organization. How do we reach B two B audiences? Um, all of those questions have sort of evolved and been wiped away over the last few years. And now CTV is is really a must have channel for any any advertiser, let alone even B two B. So um, you know, keep that in mind. Just just keep the door open. Keep an open mindset when you're considering what works for us now versus what might work for us six months from now. And then just to talk a little bit more about how we use CTV for our own B2B efforts, um, Connected Television and, and Mountain has really become one of the top performing channels for us, uh, even exceeding our paid search efforts in past months. Um, and this is in terms of, like I said, not just impressions and reach what we think of as sort of awareness driven metrics, but conversions, clicks, CPA. Um, performance television continues to exceed, you know, our own benchmarks and we continue to invest there because it works and we're able to reach our audiences in on a placement that no other channel can, uh, again, being your TV on a regular basis during premium content and premium inventory. Um, and of course we have video assets that we can use across CTV, but not just CTV. We use those on other social platforms as well. Um, you know, it's important to keep in mind. Uh, the different formats that are required across social platforms compared to CTV. You know, you look at maybe 15 or 30 second ad spots um, in a horizontal sort of, uh, you know, format for connected television. But you look at a channel like TikTok or Snapchat that tend to excel with vertical placements. Um, you know, keep that in mind if you do need to make any modifications to any existing video assets to expand to uh, whether that's expanding to CTV or potentially expanding from CTV to social channels. Um, but like I said, it's incredibly easy to set up. One of the best things about our mountain connected television, you know, platform is that we can set up a campaign. You're very familiar with that process. It follows the same type of steps as you would go through on, you know, Google ads or LinkedIn or Facebook. When you're setting up a new campaign, you enter your goal, you enter your budget, you upload your assets, you select your audience and you're, you're good to go. You're live. Um, so there's no. Uh, level of expertise that anyone wouldn't have if they've already, you know, run a campaign or two on any other digital platform, which is fantastic. So highly recommend CTV as, as a part of your marketing mix. And I wouldn't even say a part, but as a, as a main pillar uh, moving forward for you. Uh, so kind of wrapping things up, today's key takeaways. Um, there will always be new ad platforms, uh, but it's important to can create that consistent rubric, uh, determine whether a test was a success, determine how much budget it's going to require, how much of your time it's going to require, uh, put a structure in place, you know, whatever that might look like for you. If it's taking the questions in this presentation today and building out something like that, great. If you want to put together your own spreadsheet, that's fine too. Um, whatever works for you and your organization, but create a structure around it and make sure that it's repeatable. Anytime that new testing opportunities come up, it's easy to just, you know, you're not reinventing the wheel every time. Um, and then once you have decided to test a new channel, make sure that you're aligned with, you know, leadership or, you know, if you're the final decision maker, um, make sure that you're all aligned on what those primary KPIs will be to determine success and determine if this is something that's going to continue as part of your marketing mix moving forward. Uh, get that all squared away before you even launch the test, because uh, it's important to be able to optimize against those KPIs during the maybe, you know, two to four week or longer time frame. Um, that you are running the test itself. And then again, just because a channel isn't isn't a good fit right now, it might not be a good fit for you know, a number of different reasons, but just because that might be the case, um, don't permanently close the door on it. Uh, the ad industry is constantly evolving. It's important for us as digital marketers and digital advertisers to evolve our skill sets and our mindsets around channels. Um, you know, we don't spend 10 hours a week anymore making manual bid adjustments uh, on the paid search, you know, search term level. Um, that's just not a good use of our time anymore. There are bidding algorithms that handle that. And that's very different than it was five years ago. So uh, just can constantly be evolving, not only as a marketer yourself, but be evolving your organization's marketing mix, what channels you're utilizing, where you're really leaning in and what's driving performance for you. All right. Thanks, Eric.
grab that sip of water and I'll go ahead and ask the first question. And it's more of a comment um, from Shannon who is looking for some insights from you. She says, or Shannon says, I'm also wondering what the different platforms are for advertising. I feel like we're stuck with LinkedIn, Google, Bing, and Facebook. Yeah, that's a great point. Um, and a lot of organizations are are sort of in that boat. I would say those are the four, you know, sort of that we viewed as historically the core digital marketing channels. Um, but I'd say, you know, especially on the social side, there are a lot of new ones that you can explore. Uh, you know, just part of our own marketing mix, we have, we utilize Reddit, we utilize Quora. Um, I mentioned TikTok and Snapchat. Think about potentially digital audio. Um, there, you know, there are a lot of partners and uh, sort of self-serve uh, opportunities out there on the digital audio side. And then of course, you know, as, as Mountain ourselves being a connected TV platform, connected TV is, is a really vital one. Um, as I mentioned, it's the only channel that you can really consistently reach users on their television screens during premium content and, you know, premium inventory. So uh, that's a really vital one too, but just sort of think about any other channels that you can expand outside of those four those may continue to be your core channels and, and the core drivers of performance, but think about expansion and maybe looking at some other channels, not only for demand generation, um, but also demand capture like, like connected TV and mountain, which can really drive performance for you from a conversions and CPA standpoint. Great. Thanks, Eric. And another question kind of in line with what you were just talking about from Lindsay, how can CTV drive white paper downloads? Very good question. So um, yeah, essentially we have the ability within the mountain platform to track conversion events on your website. Um, you know, with a combination of our TV or our, our streaming TV placements and then our audience extension um, sort of display banners, we're able to track a user all the way through to the, their, uh, their session on your website. And you're able to track whatever events you want, um, just like any other social advertising, you know, channels and platforms, you can set up various events. Um, and you're ultimately up, uh, able to, you know, if you want to track white paper downloads, that's absolutely something you can track and optimize to as a conversion. So, uh, it's very simple that reporting is all available within the UI. Our reporting dashboard is, um, candidly one of the best I've ever seen. Uh, it's incredibly customizable, very straightforward. So all of that data is uh, available right to you in the mountain UI. Great. Thanks, Eric. Uh, question from Ruth. Can you repeat your channels? Yeah, absolutely. Um, so I mentioned like, you know, paid search on Google and both Microsoft are, are important to us. Uh, but on top of that, we cover pretty much a, a, a broad spectrum of social channels. So we've got LinkedIn, you know, Facebook, Reddit, Quora, um, Snapchat, TikTok. Um, and then of course, you know, Mountain Connected Television is a core channel for us as well. So I would say, you know, of our primary three, it really comes down to Google, LinkedIn, and Mountain Performance TV. Um, but we try and, you know, paint a broad brush, keep a healthy marketing mix so that we can, um, we can just, you know, keep demand generation, reach our audience wherever they are on a consistent basis. Great. Next question uh, from Rosalina. For connected TV platforms from an ABM perspective, we're actually able, uh, are we actually able to target by persona and title? Um, what targeting capabilities are available with CTV? Yes. So uh, we partner with Oracle um, in terms of our data audience segment. So we have, it's always changing, but tens of thousands, probably hundreds of thousands of available audience segments. Uh, within the Mountain UI to target on connected television. We ourselves target based on title and industry. So we're looking to reach you know, other marketers, other advertisers. We have a campaign set up that is targeting users with you know, manager plus titles that work in marketing and advertising. And that's a scalable campaign for us. Um, and consistently we're reaching new users and driving performance through that. So there are a number of different audience segments that you could explore. Um, you know, being Oracle, they have just about everything you can think of, uh, but there is title, there is job functionality, um, you know, so you can take a persona that you may have developed within your organization and sort of pull out those key components and build a campaign around those audience segments within the Mountain UI and target that user on connected TV. 
All right. We have an interesting question from Amanda. Is the audience targeting limited to the person who purchases, subscribes, or pays for the TV? Meaning if the husband is in charge of the account and it's not the business's target mm -hmm. audience per se, but the wife in the household is, would we miss that opportunity? Yeah, very great question. Um, and the answer is no. So this is more so based on, you know, household targeting. We can reach a number of devices within the same household. So if, you know, one person of the household fits the criteria that you're targeting for, um, your inventory wouldn't be limited to, you know, just the user name that's on the account of the streaming service that they're viewing at the time. So um, it's, you know, completely feasible to reach the number of devices across the household uh, and ultimately reach the user that you're targeting within that household itself. Okay. What about creative? Uh, should I use the same creative across CTV and social or um, should there be specific content made for each? Yeah, so this is really up to you. It's it's difficult to answer questions sometimes with it depends, but um, you know, we're a, a channel or an organization, I should say, that utilizes similar creative across both connected TV and social. Um, I touched on this a little bit during the presentation, but the most important thing is just to make sure that you're adjusting the format of your creative to the individual social channel. So think about what is enticing and engaging on TikTok. If there's a way for you to take a one minute video and cut it up with a vertical aspect and you know, pull out some fun components or, or portions of the video and cut a, a different way for it to be on TikTok and Snapchat, by all means, we definitely recommend that. Um, but it's not absolutely necessary. The only thing it required there would just be the vertical aspect of the video itself. So if you have a 30 second video, there's no reason that you can't run that across all of your channels. Um, you know, that can sometimes help with the amount of creative that you need to produce. That being said, it also helps to lean into the strengths from a performance standpoint of each individual channel. So if possible, it's great to try and mix it up a little bit. Okay. And how often do you end up testing a new platform? Yeah, so um, I'm open to testing anytime. Uh, uh, you know, there's no necessary reason to to wait to test something unless you know maybe you've got five or six different channels and tests that are all going at the same time. From a business case and you know sort of workload standpoint, it helps to spread those out. But you know, I'm constantly running a test of some sort, whether that's you know an adjustment with an experiment within uh, Google ads, or if it's a new feature that was available on a social platform, um, I love testing something. So I'm constantly testing. The most important thing is to think about, again, what maybe your sales cycle looks like. If you are testing a channel where you're trying to focus on conversions and you have a 60 day sales cycle, it's probably a bad idea to call that test uh, or, or conclude that test after only 30 days because you haven't even run long enough for someone who was exposed on day one to realistically convert into a customer. Um, so keep those those windows in mind and also keep back look keep in mind look back windows within the platforms themselves if you are tracking view through conversions. Make sure that you're running the test for a long enough time frame and that your budget is sufficient enough to drive enough volume that by the end of you know ideally three or four weeks or again by the end of maybe a couple cycles of your sales window, um, you feel confident in the results and there's enough volume there to, to really make a conclusion. All right. We have a question from John. What are the top three platforms you prioritize for Mountain's B2B strategy? Yeah, so our top three are, are definitely Mountain uh, from a performance TV and CTV standpoint. And then following that, it, it probably is Google and LinkedIn. Um, you know, LinkedIn, again, as a B2B advertiser, just is such a great opportunity for us to reach our target audience, our ABM, not only list of contacts and emails, but also our ABM accounts. Um, that's a great opportunity for us. And they have a lot of unique ad placements where we can uh, you know, have fun with it. But Google, of course, on the paid search side, at the very least, we wanna make sure that we're capturing the existing demand, both around non-brand terms and industry volume and searches, but also people that are looking specifically for mountain and to sign up for our platform. So those are our three key, uh, you know, channels, I would say that we kind of think of as our MVPs of our marketing mix. 
All right, great, Eric, thanks. We have one more question. How long should you run a test on a new platform before analyzing the data? Yeah, so um, again, just kind of touched on this one, but think about what your sales cycle is for your organization. Uh, make sure that it's run, that, that, that the test has run long enough to really collect conversion data, um, both in terms of like a decent volume to make a conclusion. It can be really difficult to, you know, if you've run a test for four weeks and campaign A or channel A has two conversions and channel B has one conversion, um, you know, that's not really statistical significance to feel confident in calling that one way or the other. Uh, so what I would say is just make sure that the look back window or the time frame of the test is long enough to capture maybe a couple cycles uh, of your sales window or maybe double the look back window that you have set for attribution within a specific channel or platform. And also keep in mind that it's important to get enough volume. So that's where I come into defining the KPIs. Uh, maybe you are looking to drive conversions. You know, we're all looking to ultimately drive conversions, free trials, demo requests, sales as our primary endpoint, but that might not be a realistic KPI to measure on a consistent basis or at scale within a channel. So think about potentially moving your KPI up the funnel a little bit. Maybe you're looking at click-through rate or engagement rate or click volume to site, um, or maybe you're pulling in site analytics data and looking at engaged users. Um, those are metrics that will have be much more voluminous in their, in, you know, in the test and the outcomes. And you'll be able to determine, you know, test A or version A versus version B. They each have one conversion, but, you know, click-through rate of version A is 3x version B. That can be an indicator of, you know, a stronger performing ad overall. So, um, yeah, that's kind of a generic question. It, it varies by business, but hopefully that provides some guidance. All right. Well, that concludes our webinar and our Q&A. So, Eric, thank you so much for sharing your strategies with us today. And thanks again to our audience for joining us. If we didn't get to your questions or comments, we will be sure to pass it along to the team at Mountain. On behalf of MarTech, I wanna thank everyone again for joining us today, and we hope you join us again soon. Thank you. Thank you.